Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're wrapping up the year with one of my favorite episodes that we do at the end of every year, our top 10 moments this year, 2022. Now, I know that you're having, you're, you're having a rough time today, and it kinda, I mean, you look the part, I gotta. I, really? I gotta admit. Dang, man. Like, no, I'm just saying that like, uh, when I came in this morning, you were already lying on the couch. Um, when we're recording this, you're still pretty early on in your injury. You're still you're adjusting <laughs> yeah. to it. Um, I do want you to know that uh, your wife called me this morning um, after you left. Oh yeah, just, just <laughs> okay. I know what she's no. Ju- ju- just to let me know that th- you're having a difficult time. <laughs> I did not tell her that I was taking a crap when she called me. <laughs> um, I guess I'm telling her that now, but uh, she did... she may have noticed the echo in the vo- my voice. You didn't like flush in the middle of the. No, I didn't. In fact, I stopped. Uh, no, no actual defecation took place while I was talking Come to your on, wife because dude. I felt like that would be, be inappropriate. I'm just letting you know. But I was, I answered it because I was like, Christy doesn't usually call me. Is everything okay? Like I thought she was going to say something like Link broke his other shoulder or something <laughs> like you know. But she just said that you're having a difficult time just getting ready, getting out of the house. And then when I came in, you're lying down, and you look. You, you you look <laughs> you look frazzled, <laughs> like you haven't been able to shave. Obviously, <laughs> you're growing your Kenny Rogers beard, and your hair still looks like you started with the, your left hand. <laughs> you're, you, but you're in the early stages. You're gonna figure this out. I'm here for you. I'm just acknowledging that you're Thank going you. through a Thank difficult you. time. That's sweet that Christy called you. Um, which brings me to my number ten. <laughs> okay. You know, we each made our list. We didn't share these with each other, so we're gonna go in reverse order. Um, yeah, I decided to put breaking my collarbone as my number 10 moment of the year because it's very fresh on my mind. Okay. Only number and, 10. Well, um, one of my criteria for making my list was, you know, at our age, it's hard to make core memories. Something that then yeah. sticks with you for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. But I think easily making that one of the criteria, breaking my collarbone becomes one of my core memories, so it, it's. I think it had to go on my list. Oh, easily. You yeah. know, for it to be, you know, it could be six weeks of recovery here, maybe more, hopefully less. Um, still haven't had my ortho follow up, so I don't know exactly what's going on, but uh, or started any PT, anything like that. But yeah, I will always remember that I broke my clavicle mm. because I always remember breaking my pelvis. And that's the only thing that I've broken. Just your pelvis and your clavicle. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of a big moment towards the end of the year here for me. And And it remains to be seen how much of an impact it will continue to have. I was, I mean, I mean, I know for Good Mythical Morning, like, yeah, because I mean, through January, I'm gonna be in freaking slang for for the episodes. Yeah. So, yeah, this morning, it was tough. I'm still making an adjustment. I'm the worst part of my day is getting up and getting going. I mean, it's everything has to change. And I've been like, you know what? I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a positive attitude about this. I'm gonna see this as an opportunity or a series of opportunities. But man, it just kind of beats you down when it's you just can't get anything together. Like, so I finally got ready. I got everything done, and like. Um, I was about to leave. I was putting on my socks and shoes, mm. and I and you know I don't want to I don't want to ask Christy and the kids to help me do everything because I want to figure out, you know, if this is m- a many weeks process, I don't want it to be like every time I put on socks for like yep. a member of my family to come over and like to hold half of the sock. Right, right. So I finally I get on my socks and my shoes, and I'm just like, Christy's in the kitchen, and I'm I I go over to her and I'm like. I need a hug. <laughs> Cause I'm like, okay, if you, I'm learning to, and this 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 will be another point on my, on, on my on my list today. But just learning to express my needs in a way that is appropriate, right? So it's like for me, it's like I need a hug. I need a hug. So then Christy like stops what she's doing, and she I told I tried to I had to tell her how to give me a hug. 
But tight, that, no, not, don't not too put, tight. Not too don't tight. put the arm up here. Put the arm. I need a side hug down here. I needed a. I definitely needed a front hug. And then I'm just hugging her for a prolonged period. Okay. And then uh, with my head on her shoulder, and then she's like, "Are you cr- crying?" <laughs> Or are you laughing? And I'm like, both. I, I, I do both, man. I, it's I, okay, man. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I was. Just, it I out, mean, man. it's just like this frustration, and it's. I'm. I'm still really grateful that I'm. I'm not really in any pain, so it's really just this frustration of like trying to get together. Yep. Um, and then the amount of, I don't know. It's just. Like, so I was laying on the couch when I got here because I was, like I told you, I'm just, it's exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting to figure this stuff out. You know how I think about things like, oh, my systems are broken. Yeah, it's especially so hard on you. It's hard on me, but because it's. Because you do things exactly a certain way that you've perfected in each step. So when that every single step has been compromised, that's It's been be cut in difficult. half. Yeah. It's like the, the dominant arm has been taken away. So. I'm really, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm really trying to see it as an opportunity. It's like, what what can I learn from this? How can I, you know, it could be a lot worse. Chrissy was like, thank God you didn't hit your head. You know, that could, that could have altered your life for many years, if not forever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> she was like, I've done some reading. <laughs> so. Um, it's an opportunity for your left arm. Once I get here, I'm, the worst part's over. Like, that's how I look at it. Well, if you need a hug, just let me know. So, I'll be laughing and crying on your shoulder. I mean, it. I was legitimately thinking about afterward as I was driving in, I was like, you know the phrase, a shoulder to cry on? It's like, oh yes, I actually took advantage of a shoulder to cry on. And um, that's a good thing, hmm. that's a good thing. It. it it did help, you I'm know. Sure you got your it. wife, and you know, enjoyed it. I think she was like, did she? So when she called you, did she go into that detail? Uh, no, she's she, like, she, she, she was just, like crying no, and laughing at the she, same I time. I think she said that he broke down a little bit. <laughs> so I did not picture yeah, you just, crying on her shoulder, but now I do. Well, it was a beautiful uh, moment. One of my top ten it's moments all, it's all of the downhill year. Downhill from here, is that? And I probably it's probably too soon to use that joke. Because that's how you hurt yourself. Yeah, going down. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't, I mean, so I put that in my number ten, man. Um, my number ten is adopting Sean, <laughs> our new dog. I love the look on your face. He made the list. Sean is really growing on me. I love that little guy. Um, he, as a matter of fact, Jesse, you know, was recently. She was when we went to North Carolina. She stayed a little bit longer. Uh, working on some stuff, and so Shepard and I came back, and so I had some time with him, and That's he, good. he's 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 really connecting with me. And you saw the other day when we were having all those meetings at the Creative House, just you know, digital meetings. He's coming up to me all the time. He would, he, he came up to you and jumped in right in your lap right when we came, when I came over. I was shocked because I had a hat on, and he's afraid I, of hats. I thought he was jumping in my lap to like. To, to eat my crotch, I shouldn't have said it that yeah. way. To bite me, he like he did the last time I came to work and he was there. Yeah, he bit you twice. But you said it was because he was on a leash, but he was like, yeah, he jumped up on my I lap think he's and also, accepted petting. He's a learning to trust people. He's a learning. He's learning to trust people, Whatever, wherever he came from, there, he developed reasons to not trust people and to not trust strangers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I, you know, he's still in the house, but it's a little bit more, uh, a little bit easier to deal with. He's so cute. He's gr- his hair's growing in. He's actually yeah. becoming like he's the more dog. attractive. He's becoming the dog that I clicked on, <laughs> right? <laughs> on the wi- the website to adopt. He's a him. lot more pettable. And uh, so he and, he and you know what? He remains a challenge and an opportunity. There you Not go. quite like your clavicle. There you go. Um, but it's sort of like he's a he's a little project in some ways for our family to be like. Barbara's so easy, loves everybody. The only thing wrong with Barbara is she'll steal the food out of your hand, and we cannot somehow cannot stop her from doing that. But she's great in every other way, very well behaved, well trained, doesn't crap, you know, it pee anywhere except outside. Sean is a little bit of a project, but I think it's teaching us 
patience as a family. And it's, you know, you got to put him on the list because, I mean, in addition to the family, is absolutely a core memory. Because I'm right about that, right? It, you know, there's certain things that for years to come, maybe for the rest of your life, you'll, you'll refer back to Sean now. Oh, yeah. And this was the year of Sean. Well, hopefully there's more years of Sean. Yeah, the first year, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, you know, I, I, I completely agree. He's changed the dynamic of our family in a positive way. Um, at my number nine, I put our college friend trip. <laughs> at my number nine, what? I put our college friends We're trip. We're such in sync, man. This is great. That means that I, we didn't steal it from each other. This we, is my we, favorite we, thing We don't happens. look at each other's lists. Well, you, it looks like you're looking at it now. I can't read it from there. Okay. It was, I mean, the ones on our list that we've talked about in more detail in other episodes, we can gloss over a little bit, but you know, I will say that it was the culmination of reestablishing a relationship over the entire pandemic and with us meeting in person. And it now it leads to that being something that We've already planned we're gonna do it again. Um, to go on another trip in June, I believe. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take whitewater rafting to the next level. I'm a little nervous. I know now that I've proven the fragility of my body to myself. Because we're up in the ante significantly, so much so that the upper animus. We're doing a series of class five rapids, which was the most intense that we could find in Colorado at that time of year. Hey man, you gotta have fun. And they were like, well, you need to come the day before and do a swim test. And I've been on many whitewater rafting trips, including the Upper Gully. (laughs) Right. In West Virginia. This is comparable to that. I didn't do no swim test for that. I know. They got me feeling nervous, man. But that was also the 90s, or the early 2000s probably. You're saying the standards have increased. I bet so. Safety yeah. standards, the liability stuff, you know, all of that. So yeah, now we're 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 gonna have two trips under our belt. It may become an annual thing, and you know, our girls' trip. It's essentially what it is. I think it's our girls' trip. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, and just kind of knowing that it's gonna happen. Yeah, I think that there was something. Because otherwise, about, I, I'm sorry, I cut you off. I think health. Oh, Turn over a new leaf. No, in my it's, mind, it, I started it, talking before it, you. Is this what I have to I'm look forward in 2023 to... that you're not going to cut I'm... me off? <laughs> Hell, that you're no. going to realize that when you've done it and not do it? I am trying, but I don't want to like make it a resolution or anything. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. It's like it was like a hug. <laughs> um, thanks for thanks for the feedback, but I mean, if you, uh, I mean, don't twist my titty about it because. Um, well, now I forgot what I was going to say. I got so excited. <laughs> um, no, I think that one of the things that made it so significant is the fact that obviously we have a very uh, unusual relationship in terms of me and you, the longevity that of our friendship and the fact that we were friends as kids and friends all throughout different pivotal times, and we're still friends and still working together. And um. But the only other people really in our lives at this point that they're, I'm trying to think of the way to explain this. If you go back 20 years and the, you know, this friendships last have, have been around for a long time and outside of family, those are some of the only people that we have connected with on that level after all this time, which is just a really beautiful thing to be able to happen. I mean, I, I, I hope that that can happen for other people just be like, hey, you you form this friendship at a pivotal time, and ma- it's not always easy, especially when you're in different parts of the country to maintain that that relationship and those friendships, but the pandemic gave us that opportunity, and now we're kind of cashing in on it by being able to create experiences together. Um, and also, it's, you know, as we discussed when we talked about it, that trip on the episode, it's a really, um, you know, we're all in different places. We all met in a very particular context. We all met in yeah. a campus ministry context. And we've talked many times about where we're at in regards to that, and they're in a different. Everybody's in a different place in regards to that, uh, but there's still a real, a real closeness and honesty, authenticity in our relationship. And so I just think it's a really, it's really good thing soul for nourishing to reconnect with people who, yeah, our our beliefs have drifted in in various directions, and maybe 
I don't want to insinuate that we've all drifted or whatever. You know what I'm trying well, to say. Well, everyone's changed. Hey, everybody's evolving. But like, um, yeah, that our friendship can still be so strong and so supportive and that love can still be the center of it is very, uh, it's, it ministers to my soul. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, even though our video chats have kind of fallen off, at least we know that we have this trip coming up and that, that we kind of have that cadence now. Because I, To me, that's, I, that's how I see the video chats were the, uh, the beginning of a foundation that now we're building on it with these trips that we can schedule. And there's the text thread yeah. that, that continues. Um, just one note I wanna make, uh, really just for us. Um, it does give me an idea about something, like the ideas that we've been logging I have one that like is semi related to this. Okay. So actually a couple. So I'm just gonna remember that by saying it out loud. You can help me remember it so we can put it on the list of stuff for the twenty twenty three list. Okay. Is um, it so it's your go. So my number eight, I'm skipping ahead because like you just covered my number nine. Um I do know for a fact this is on your list because we just already discussed it, and I'm assuming it's higher on your list, but let's go ahead. It, it, I, there's a reason that it's at this level on my list. Okay. Um, we had a, I'm going to call it our most, my most surreal, one of the most surreal experiences of my entire life in a lot <laughs> of ways, and definitely the most loosely stated Hollywood experience of my life. Mm-hmm. The most... I've ever experienced anything because of the privilege that we have because we have a successful internet show. And that is being invited to the the studio with Post Malone as he oh, was yeah. as he was working on his most recent album. Now you really stole my thunder here. You didn't make a number 1, did you? This is my number 2. Oh, okay. So I knew it would be high on it, your list. Yeah, this is this is this is it's interesting. So it's tough to it's tough maybe, to order the list. Yeah, it is, and it's 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 a bit you know it there it's a bit thrown together. But but the rule is if you ranked it higher, you get to talk about it first. So oh oh well, th- this is one that I mean we had a conversation about this one. That's why we knew that it was on both of our lists because we were both trying to figure out if we wanted to put it out there publicly. You know, I think we're very sensitive to like the fact that, you know, you know, first of all, you don't want to sound like braggy. Like, oh, I know somebody who's like like telling a story for clout. We're not doing that. And you also don't want we don't want Austin to um feel like we're trying to take advantage of the fact that he's been gracious towards us. For clout, for for and to be like, oh, can we get it? Let's get a selfie together so we can show it on the internet right now. So right, we, we don't do that. We don't do that. Um, but this was this was such a huge moment that yeah, just to just to talk about that night, I think is something that we agree that it was like uh, we kind of kind of have to talk about it. So we'll you know we're excited to to let you in on it, especially because it's something that we haven't shared. A lot of this stuff we've shared before. Yeah, this was so. Um, when he came on the show, we then it was basically implied, hey, if you want, maybe we should hang out. And then he invited us. That was, so it was like February, March. And I would frame. say the first time he ever came on the show, the first time he came on the show, after we finished the show, he was like, what are you guys doing the rest of the day? Uh, right. And we were like, well, we're making more GMM. <laughs> and we're, like, we're, doing, we're doing what we do every day. That we're shooting GMM. So, so we didn't get, we, we didn't, we never hung out after the first time, which is like a, I was like, man, that was such a big regret. I was like, I'm not gonna make that mistake again Yeah. if there's an invitation. Right. So then, um, you know, we set the night we were gonna hang out. And d- don't make this my story. We're both there, so maybe we're just kinda like filling the gaps. But um, yeah, he was like, we, whatever you guys wanna do, if you wanna come by the studio. And so when he, once he mentioned the stew, as he put it, I was like, yes. That's what I want to do. I yeah, let's let's hang out. So we, so we go over there to the studio, and we meet Lou as producer, and um, there's just a, a couple other friends of his hanging out. But it's like one room, uh, 
very dark um, with like the console and then back to the left there's like the booth with the window. So it's a pretty intimate space. And we go in there and we're just, you know, it's, we had, you, know, you, you see how much fun we had on the show. You know, it's, it, it always blew my mind about how much of a fan he was and is of GMM. So it's like, and and you saw how it wasn't Good Mythical More. We were just like talking about the gas station pills and like, so when we were setting up going to hang out, like we were making jokes about, I don't want to have any of those gas station pills. There was a lot of laughter the entire time. We had, we we yeah had, we just kind of picked we were, up right we were when we were making each off. other laugh the whole time, and then playing we, music. We were connecting over our love of music and specifically country music. So there was a lot of there. In fact, there was one time there was a period of time where there was like a Hank. Junior versus Hank Senior battle, where we would pick a Hank Junior song and he would pick a Hank Senior song, and we would play them like a versus battle, which and, was uh, which was hilarious. And that lasted, I mean, hours. We were there a very long time, and just kind of getting the story of like, and we don't I, stay, we don't do that. Your bedtime is nine thirty. I mean, I do oh, stay no. up till midnight on a relatively regular basis, but this was. As we crept into the wee hours of the morning, I was like, I guess this is just how he rolls. Oh yeah, like uh, he he goes to bed. He's nocturnal when the, when the sun comes up. Um, and yeah, I I'm so fascinated about the creative process that I couldn't help myself but just kind of dig into like his relationship with Lou and like how how much how they collaborate and um, you know they were playing playing like. Uh, preliminary tracks of things that then became like massive hits and I, I was just like I was just like a kid in a candy store like I couldn't sit down it was pretty obvious I couldn't sit down <laughs> like I, I'm not you know yeah and I'm like you know what I don't I, I am if I'm gonna fanboy I'm just gonna do it you know it's like over the especially if it's over the music like I'm not I think he understood that like I was like fanboying over like the creative process and the 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 music, and not the fact that like, oh my God, it's so cool to meet you. You know, it's a in yeah. my mind, it's a different thing. So it's like to to like really connect with something that an artist is making to the point where it's like if they're going to play something for you, you're going to get up and shake your ass. Like that's just a decision I made. Like dance like nobody's watching, right? And it's and it's not it doesn't have to be everybody's decision. Well, there's like, a reason that there's two of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate that. So yeah, I was uh I mean, yeah, and at certain moments, yeah, I was kind of in like music journalism mode where it's like, how give me I have to understand. And they were you know, I think they were both very into the conversation because they were like, Oh, play him this, play him that, play yeah. him, play him this demo. And then um you know, at the time we were talking about the the neon moon cover that we made. Oh yeah, for, for the, the mythical society because we were playing so much country music. We were talking about that, and and I think at one point I said, or one of us said, like, "Well, I'm gonna make a deal with you. We'll play this song for you under one condition." And he's like, "What?" And he, I was like, "That you play a song off." Like, give us a sneak peek of a song off your, off your album, because I know it's, uh, you know, I know it's coming out soon. That you finished it. And he was like, "Well, I want to play you the whole album." Yeah, like he, he was planning on doing it anyway. Yeah, he was like, "I, yeah, I'm not gonna play a song. I'll only play it if you listen to the whole thing." And I'll never forget that moment because I was like, I was already like the kid in the candy store, and then I'm like. We're looking at each other and we're like, yes, this is amazing. So we just, we sat there and we just listened to the entire completed pretty, it, I mean, every song was sequenced, finished. All but one, fully, all but one song. Fully baked. And oh, um, I remember sitting there, uh, and this is when it hit me uh, and why it stands out. And I would say, if you're talking about exact slices of time, like one moment, I do recognize why this is higher on your list. And it and I it's just uh, you'll understand why, you know, there's other things that are higher on the list later. But this mo this slice of life 
when we were a few tracks in and we were like listening with our eyes closed. Or I was listening with my eyes closed. This is 12 karat toothache. So it's like if you've listened to it, you know that a, lot, a number of places it gets pretty moody. Like it's not, it's not all party anthem type stuff. And I then I would open my eyes and realize that Post Malone is sitting next to me. Quite, yeah, <laughs> like, it was listen, listening to this album, and again, we just don't have a lot of experiences like this because we're not like we're not we don't try to be part of a scene. We don't like we're just our lives are strikingly normal in almost every way except for these little moments. And I was just like, this is a this is a memory. I was like, this is a special moment. Yeah. So we so and we listened to the entire thing. Incredible experience. Uh, also, they play it so loud, I felt like it was like literally like shaking my spleen. <laughs> and then it's like literally 3.30 a.m. And he's like, well, let me, okay, yeah, what did he say? He was like, oh, are we supposed to record something? Yeah, and earlier that night when we were talking about um, like our favorite artists and we were talking about Sturgill Simpson and all this stuff, um, we also started talking about the Fleet Foxes, yeah. which is, you know, from our top albums uh, episode. Like we both, they're like have like their form like albums that are like very formative in like our our musical lexicon, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and he's a huge fan, and so then he was like, "Play him, play him the track." And then he was like, Robin, who is Fleet Foxes, came in here a few weeks ago and we started working on something. And then he plays a track. And it's just, it's just vo um, vocalizations and then the beat drops and then it's an instrumental. So there's, there's, no, there's no vocals at all. And he plays that and that was like um, before we listened to the whole album. It was just like, oh, this is just something that we created together. And so I'm flipping out because it's like two of my favorite artists working together, and one of them's in the room with me playing it, and it's just a preliminary track, which they didn't say it would be anything. So then fast forward to at this point in the evening when it's like, oh man, I forgot how I was supposed to work. So he goes into the booth, and then that's the track that he plays. And he, so this, so this is the song that ended up being the love hate letter to alcohol, right? Yeah. So. He, this is we saw his process, which was essentially going into a booth, and Lou starts playing this track, and he just starts singing over it, literally just kind of ad libbing and making it up as he went head, along. Yeah. yeah, and it was like he's creating the situation where he's at the bar, and yeah, then, like know, I woke up on the ground. It's like I got my. He started singing about his teeth getting knocked out, and then at one point, like after about ten, fifteen minutes of like riffing on stuff, he comes out and he's like, ha, ha, how many teeth? Google how many teeth How many are teeth in are in the human there. mouth? And he had said 32. And we Googled it. And it, it was, was 32. Like, yeah, I, I didn't, you Googled it and you were like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, there's, there's, I have 32 teeth in my mouth. The dentist told me I'm like in like a the very low percentage of people that still has their wisdom teeth at my age. Oh, you so don't if have you, 32. If you, so if you have, if I don't all know your if he wisdom has teeth his, come in, you have 32. I think so. So then we told him that, so then he, you know, and if you listen to the lyrics, it's like, I, I, um, I woke up on the ground, I guess I should have kept that to myself. Sometimes I'm too good at running my mouth, but not good enough. And then it's, well, yeah, last night I had 32 teeth in my mouth, but some went away. That's yeah. the lyric. And, and at the starts, time, we did not realize that he was that this song was going to be on the album, but because the way right. he presented the album was basically like, "This is it, this is it," and he kind of uh, you know he didn't, he didn't he just implied like, "Oh, I'm I'm still recording something." He actually um, this was pretty cool. Just like you know, a week later, texted us like, "Here's the, here's where the, here's where the track ended up." Yeah, he was like, "We finished it," and I I was like, "Oh man, he's finished this track," and then lo and behold. It ends up being on the album, and then come full circle. Oh, and then then the next thing he goes, he performs on Saturday Night Live, and he performs that song, performs song. with Fleet Foxes backing him up. Yeah, like 
on stage. And it was like, dude, I was there when, crazy. This, when this happened. Uh, and then we had we got to see him in concert when um, he 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 his and the tour song was in the LA set. and he of course he performed the song so which is that, amazing that was the only one thing I'll add to this story which I, is a moment I remember is when I was sort of reluctantly I think actually you said something about it I I didn't want to talk about it like talking about the fact that I was working on my own music because uh-huh. I didn't want to be the the internet comedian who was like well I'm working on my music <laughs> and uh, so. I was like, yeah, I'm doing like a country thing. And so he he grabs his guitar, his famous acoustic guitar that's got all the like r- signatures on it and holds it out to me. He's like, play a song. Huh? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I, I don't, I'm not ready for that. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I remember it. Yeah. That was pretty. That was that was pretty, pretty early brilliant. in the evening. That was when we were doing the Brooks and Dunn. Like, but it was early in your like. I, I had not heard any of the I songs. Didn't, no, at that point I didn't have a. I, I was not prepared to like. I had written the songs, but I was like, I can't like. I, I it's too. I can't do it. I, you know, I'm glad I didn't do it. What uh, a surreal. But it was a very night. surreal night. And then so then we call an Uber and we like get in the Uber to come home, like three thirty. No, it was like four, four in the four morning. Four thirty maybe. I don't it's know. Like we don't. Yeah, we're not. We're not used to this experience in this hour of the of the morning and when we get in the uber the first song that's playing is his new song with the weekend with the at weekend. the time that we it was had, just like he had just played for us that he just played for us it was just so yeah it was wild man surreal yeah and you know he's a sweetheart the dude best is guy just, ever the dude it's not hype it's not hype He's unlike any any uh, celebrity yeah. of that of that level of fame than that we've ever met. That yeah, know, in terms of his authenticity. Yeah, a, a night to remember. My number two. Well, I'm sorry, but we just we 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 spent a lot of time on it. So, well, before we keep going on the list, uh, we want to remind you about our end of year sale at Mythical.com. This is going to be through the 26 uh, through from the 26th of uh, December through the 31st. So very end of the year. Um, and basically the way this works is the more money you spend at mythical.com, the more you save. So 10% off orders of $50 or more, 20% off orders of $100 or more, and 30% Ooh. off orders of $150 or more. 10% off, 20% off, 30% and off. And this is all items. If they're a sale item, if they're not a sale item. No code necessary. This is for ha! everyone. Go to mythical.com. You're gonna be surprised at what you find and what you want. Spend that spend that money that, you, that your grandma gave you. For the holidays. So this is my number eight. Number eight. My number eight. Okay, so 2022 was the year of new therapist for me. Uh, I was looking back at my Google photos and January 1st, I had a photo of a business card that Christy gave me. You know, and she was, and I talked about this at some point early on in the year about like making making the switch and I I think a lot of the process happened around this time last year on the podcast about thinking talking about my therapy experience getting your feedback kind of hearing myself out loud um realizing that I needed to make a change needed to find a better fit and I will say that um 2 weeks ago like my one of my most recent therapy appointments, like right around Thanksgiving. Um, it was, I, w- w- when I got home from that therapy appointment, Christy asked me what she always does, how's therapy? And I said, for the first time, I was like, it was great. I, I really am so, I'm so glad that I met this guy and that uh, he's my therapist and this is working out so well. And um, Cause I just told him in the session, it was one of those sessions that was, um, it ended up kind of being a celebration session. You know, we had, we had tackled a number of things and you know, it's therapy's never done, Rhett. But there's certain points when it's like, and, and yes, it was Thanksgiving, so it was kind of an appropriate time but it just so happened to time out that way that, you know, coming back from some of the other things on the list, like Mythicon related stuff, and but just a culmination of things that we were working on, bringing me to a point um, 
mentally and emotionally to be able to not only weather the trials and process things, but also to be more present for the highlights, like the things on this list. Um, you know, I really was able to be grateful for how therapy brought me to that point where I was able to more fully experience um, the highs and the lows, I guess you would say. And that was something that we ended up talking about. And I was able to tell him, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for all these things, and I'm also thankful for you. This is really working out. <laughs> hmm. And um, it, it took, you know, that was, that's like 11 months in. And it's all along the way, it was mostly positive indications. But at a certain point, you realize, okay, I think this is, I think this is my, I think this is my guy. Hmm. I think this is my it's person. Important. And um, yeah, it made a, it just made a huge different difference in my year. So it's like 2022, the year of kind of, kind of getting that in place, um, realizing that I'm no longer approaching a session with anxiety about the session. Like that I'm, that I have, I'm at ease and I, I, there's this level of trust and confidence that what, you know, it'll be what it'll be and I've seen it go in so many different directions that I've realized that I've loosened up and I've kinda, I'm able to let go of that particular hang up, which has been very difficult for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm good at like putting myself out there, but and I still don't know exactly what I would label it like this sense of like control and relationship to anxiety and all of that. But like it 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 was always a hurdle to overcome, and just to realize that that had been like severely lowered to the point where it's like basically not there anymore. Um, is huge. Yeah, that and it's so, not like something that it's not a uh, a homework assignment. Or like something that you have to have something prepared for, or, you or performative. Be, yeah, and um, you know, uh, early on in in starting our conversations, this was a topic of conversation. So I I kind of invited that level of conversation that it, that on occasion, not every session, but he would check in on that front. Like, how are you processing me? Like how. How is what I'm saying, like, it, it it was helpful that, like, I was able to set the table, you know? So I know when you, we, we gush about therapy, and I just want to acknowledge that, like, sometimes, you know, therapy is work, but then there's a, that for, for me and maybe for a lot of people, there's, like, a whole other layer of work to be able to get to do that normal therapy work, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um... You know, so if my 22, 2022 story can like give people hope that like it's it's worth it, and you know what, if that's if it's um, if the thing that's keeping you from therapy is therapy, then uh, it's still worth it. It's still worth it, and it may take going through a, a few people to find to find that right fit. Uh, but don't give up. Amen. Look at that. See how inspirational this can be. Um, this is, I'm gonna, you know, just, I'm gonna move through some of these. Yeah, I got some quick. quicker ones after this. Um, number seven is going to see movies with Shepard. Uh, and mm -hmm. I would say the specific moment is us going to see the horror movie Smile together. Obviously, now that Locke is off at college, uh, Shepard and I spend a fair amount of time together and our thing is going to see movies together and we both love horror movies and we both have very similar tastes in music and movies in general and it's kind of our little thing and so much so that you know uh, ever since the arc light closed mm -hmm. all, all these theaters in town are AMC theaters that's pretty much where you go is you, if you're going to go to a theater you go to an AMC theater and they're constantly selling this AMC Stubbs membership, right? Oh, did you get that? So every single time we show up at the theater and we see the people in the yellow line getting to the concessions a little bit faster, Shepard's like, Dad, we need to, why, 
why aren't we Stubbs members? And then we go in and we and they have then they give the, they do the ad for the Stubbs membership, and then they do the Nicole Kidman, uh, you know mm-hmm. that that wonderful little thing that happens before AMC movies. I just we just and people clap every time going to see a movie in L.A. and I I know this probably happens elsewhere, but like. In LA, I haven't heard him clap for that Nicole Kidman part. Well, you haven't been to the AMC theater. Lately. Yes, I have. Every single time, what? Nicole Kidman comes on, everybody claps and giggles and says, "Oh yeah!" And then, and then when she finishes, everybody claps because and because there's I, the thing I was talking to Shepard about is that like being in the entertainment capital of the world and watching these movies that are all pretty much you know like. There's a connection between every movie in Los Angeles, even if it was made somewhere else. And so many people are in the industry. And so there's this cynicism and sort of insider mentality to watching entertainment so that when like a bad movie trailer comes up. Yeah. Like there, we just watched, uh, there was a trailer for a new movie called Plane. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. And the whole place burst out laughing as soon as it said Plane because it looks like the worst movie ever made. Gerard and, Butler. And then it says Plane. I just love kind of watching movies in that atmosphere, and people stick around for the credits because they're like, "I might know somebody in those credits at the end," you know? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so so not a sponsor though, huh? Li- well, literally, right before we went to our most recent movie, which we went to see Glass Onion on your recommendation, and it was great. Oh yeah. Uh, we signed up for the the membership, not the top level where you get three movies a week because we can't cause I can't see three movies a week. I just got the one where we get like the free upgrades on concessions. We get the shorter line, and then we get points that we can use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian knows what's is up. This, this is a sponsor. Um, is this a sponsor? It's not, I mean, not a sponsor. It could be. Anyway, it's been a real. We we, we have this. Uh, Shepard and I have a great relationship. It's tough to get Shepard to talk, unlike Locke, who will talk about everything. But going to see a movie with Shepard, we talk about the movie all the way back home. Like that gets him talking. He's like. Well, I thought uh, this and that. I mean, he's got all these opinions about everything, and he he really opens up and starts talking. So that's been, uh, I love that. And w- when specifically, like Smile, we talked about how it was the perfect horror movie until it they did what every horror movie does, and they show you the monster in a way that ends up being like, uh, this isn't as good as I wanted it to be. But so was anyway. there a was there a point when you realized this is my this is the opportunity to, to stay with that buzzword. And I guess it was it smile when you were like, when you're like. To get the AMC stubs? No, dude. <laughs> no. no, dude. This is the opportunity to finally <laughs> bite no, the bullet. No, dude. When you're like, this is, this is my, this is my connection or one of my connections. This is like, this is an easy card I can play to like get in with Shepard and, Find something that it can be our thing. I don't know if there was a moment. It's just I, it's more as I was thinking about it for 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 this and realizing how many movies we had seen together and how we'd really connected in that way and how it, I've been at the same time talking to Jesse about how man you know I take Shepard to school sometimes and like we can go the whole he just wants to listen to music and like I'll ask him a couple of questions he gives me one word answers typical fourteen year old yeah um, and he's not being a jackass he's just like I'm going to school and I don't want to talk about things right yeah. now yeah. Um, uh, so no, it's just more like th- reflecting on it and being like, oh, we, we really talk about a lot of things. And it also, the tenor of our conversation moves from a dad trying to be a dad, which happens often with me, uh, right? meaning like, okay, well, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing this, here's some advice, Here, here's your, talking about your schoolwork, moves us out Common of, interest. of that dynamic into just like two guys talking about movies, which, right. is, uh, which is great for us. That's awesome. Um, my number seven is my DJ Elkhound Snuggle Baby journey. Not number that, seven. Not that DJ Elkhound Snuggle Baby is my name. It's just Elkhound Snuggle Baby. But it, it, I'm just clarifying my okay. DJ journey. Maybe you put um, it, maybe in a second parenthesis after Snuggle Baby. It's just DJ because you don't want people to call you DJ Elkhound Snuggle Baby. It could be Elkhound Snuggle Baby DJ. I have to. I was giving up the opportunity to DJ our mythical Christmas party because I only have one freaking arm. Yeah. And then- um, Sad, really. I don't, but I'm not going to. I'm still gonna do it. Yeah, right, right yeah. Because I just do it with one arm. I'll have, I'll have Ben in the, uh, in the baby Bjorn in front of me. Are you going full suit? <clears throat> I think I have to. I haven't- You tried that on with I haven't your thought shoulder? about it. 
haven't thought about any of this yet. But right. big, I mean, it was the it was the year of the genesis of Alcon Snuggle Baby. So yeah, that's it. I've already talked a lot about it. We dedicated a whole episode to it. So let's keep going. Okay, uh, number six for me was getting COVID. I thought about putting on a list and I forgot. Uh, you know, so many people at this point, most people have gotten it. And it has been, I was actually thinking just the other day about how we're about to transition into 2023. And I remember at the very beginning of all this, in uh, March 2020, talking to our good friend Mike McCarg, smartest guy I know. Thanks. And, uh, he was talking to us about COVID at that time. And, you know, he's smart. And so he was like, we'll still be talking about and dealing with this directly in 2023. And I was like, Mike, you crazy, man. (laughs) Now, first of all, you know, there's been so much, you know, I get on my soapbox about being frustrated uh, about the COVID thing and, and COVID denial and that kind of thing. But one of the things that I've thought about recently is how everything that they said, everything that the the, the epidemiologist said in, tw- in 2020 essentially happened. They said that we'd still be talking about and dealing with this in 2023. They said that almost everyone was going to get it. They said that it was the, the this is the number of people that were gonna die within a certain range. Go back and look at what they, were, they said and every single thing that they said within those ranges is what ended up happening because these things operate according to models and it's just interest it's just an interesting thing to 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 note. Not every they didn't Noted. get every, they didn't get everything right, but it was just it, but here we are transitioning into 2023. We are still dealing with it and talking about it. Now not nearly to the same degree. It's not nearly as disruptive as it was and you know it, it, all indications are that it's sort of dwindling it's becoming every time we start talking about it it's a little bit less of an issue and then eventually it's just like yeah we don't really talk about it, think about this very much unless you're in a super high risk group whatever that's by, great by the time you got it which is also within a week of when i got it it's totally separately yeah it was it like mentally it felt totally different than like all the different iterations of how I thought I would respond to it beforehand. Well, I had gotten to this place, which I think a lot of people have got to, which was maybe I'm immune to it. I mean, some people are. <laughs> you know, some people just don't get it just because of some genetic predisposition. And uh, of course, that turned out to not be the case. But that ended up being when I got it, I got it from my wife and then spent a week in a hotel room in Chapel Hill with her. And that was a very um, interesting experience for the, the both of us, literally being in a hotel room and not leaving the hotel room except to go out onto the balcony of the hotel room. Thank God there was one of those. Um, for about five days. And it just was this, I, you know, I, I have my Aura Ring, uh, which is not a sponsor, but we are investors. Uh, so maybe they should be. <laughs> but it, it gives you all your vitals and stuff. and. Mm-hmm. You know, I go back and I can, and you can look at all your data, and I look at the data for that week, and I see my temperature of like a hundred and three and a half, I think is what I got to two nights in a row, and my like HRV, you know, heart rate variability was like super low. It's like my readiness score was like in the thirties. It was like the lowest it's ever been, and it was like that was a tough, that was a tough time. But it's a it's a time that almost everybody has had to experience on some level, and obviously it's been devastating, and continues to be devastating for a lot of people. Whether you, you know, you know somebody who lost their lives, or you're just somebody who's dealing with long COVID. So it's just my personal direct encounter with COVID after having encountered all its effects as just a member of society. Mm-hmm. I think that would kind of crystallize in 2023. Thankfully, I haven't gotten it again, and who knows if I, when or if I'll get it again. But it was memorable. It I've, was a moment. I've lost track of the number of boosters that I've gotten at this point. I think it's three. Is it four? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. All of them. Yeah, sign me up, man. Sign me up. I'm in the cult. I love to get boosted. Um, let's see. My number six was the launch of 
Dispatches from Myrtle Beach. Oh, yeah. Um, because as my dad and I talk about m- many times on the podcast itself, it's just, we're just realizing, like, wow, it just gives us this new touch point for our relationship to, like, move. I w- It's not, it's to a new level in some ways because it's, um, like, the just the frequency and the depth of our connection are, are both, like, on another level. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also expanded the nature of our relationship in a way that I don't believe ever would have happened if it wasn't for the podcast. I mean, to to know that every week I'm gonna have, it, it ends up being like a 45, 50 minute conversation that then uh, Logan cuts down to 30 minutes. Right. Um, Cause after all, my dad is in charge of the episode. So <laughs> some things you just gotta tighten up or maybe remove. <laughs> um, maybe she removes some of the stuff that I say too, I bet. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Two peas in a pod, man. But yeah, it's like we are interacting with each other on different terms. It's it's about having fun, like high value and having fun, and also just connecting with each other. So we find ourselves answering questions that people have emailed or asking, I'm asking him questions like, what? so what went into naming me? I mean, I know that I'm the third and you're junior. It's like, I'd I'd actually never heard like his thoughts about that. Like how long was he thinking about there being a third before he was even, um, you know, thinking about having- Was it his idea? kids. Well, yeah, he was a junior and it was just kind of, it was kind of similar to how I thought about Lincoln, but it wasn't, it wasn't that it was a revolutionary answer, but that it was a a conversation we had never had. We never talked about it. You know, and it's it's one thing to talk about like, okay, you talk you call if I call my dad on the phone, he'd be like, I had a prostate exam, they're doing some tests. Uh, I decided not to tell you about it until I got the results and they're fine. You know? It's like that's how the conversation would have gone. Yep. But like on the podcast, it becomes this like it all of that, the important part of the conversation still happens. That like, oh, I, I care about you. I want to make sure that your prostate's good. But then it's also the most fun version of the conversation that that we'll have. Yeah. You know, it's like seeing him grow. And like, you know, there's you've seen this from me. Many times I'll come out of this room and I'll go back into uh, our office. And if you're in there, I'm just like, I'm proud of my dad. Because he is, mm-hmm. he's actually... He's developing. He's really understanding the parts of this that he needs to understand, but then continuing to not develop in the ways that I don't want him to develop <laughs> so that it stays like entertaining in that right way. So it's like um like this the the way that he decides to prepare, like the things that he brings to the table. Like he's fully committing himself to to this and I I I am surprised at how much of him is in me that has brought me to this point. It's like, as much as I knew it, I'm still surprised by the extent of it. Now you're getting to experience it. The, yeah, the extent of it. So it's like, it's I was, you know, I, I didn't want to get my hopes up when, when we decided to do it. I was very reticent to like, like fully commit to it mentally. It's like, oh, it's just something we'll do for a little bit. And you know, all good things come to an end, but like, there's no end in sight for dispatches from Myrtle Beach. And I think it it ultimately comes down to the experience that we have with each other. And then it's up to the it's it's up to an audience to like know if they want to be a part of that. And like, a, enough people are. I, in my opinion, the audience still needs to grow. I and think, we, yeah. I would love to. I'd love for more people to know about it and hear about it. And it's it's challenging to know how to get a podcast out there. Um but absolutely on the list, you know, it um it could probably be higher, but it's my number six. He is he has fully embraced um his his role and that wasn't something that was guaranteed. No. Um my number five is my trip with Locke 
from Maine to Miami, which we did a whole episode on. It's a big one. The specific moment up from that trip is our walk a- around the the Washington Mall. Yeah, around the you know the monuments at night. Um, and you know because of the time that we recorded this episode last year, we always record it before the end of the year. Technically, my other road trip with Locke, which was in December of 2021 when we had to drive back from North Carolina to uh, California. Those two road trips with Locke, I think fundamentally changed the dynamic of our relationship, which fundamentally changed the dynamic of our relationship that exists now while he's at college, right? Yeah. So it's funny how, and I think this is, it makes me think about these moments in a different way. Because a lot of the things that we will list are things that are outside of the ordinary experience. A lot of the things will be in our trips that you went on, right? Yeah. And we talked about this before, but doing something, and this is why I tell Shepard, you know, go go to a summer camp. Like, do these things. Go on a trip. Take advantage of this opportunity because shaking your life up and doing this short-term thing yeah. When you look back on your life, it'll be the things that took you out of your normal routine. That's what you will remember. Those will be the formative experiences. Those will be the times in which you like put your mouth up to a fire hydrant and, and, and basically ingested an experience at a much higher rate than you do in your normal life. And those two trips with Locke are a testament to it. Just being in a car together, going across the country, just the two of us, and I think it was a five day trip and then maybe maybe a five or six day trip. So we're talking about 10 to 11 days of time that helped de- define our dynamic. And I think helped us move in the same way that this uh, I'm talking about with Shepard. It, it moved from so much of this dad and son dynamic, which for me ends up being the uh, what is my role in, in giving them the best advice and guiding them, which is important, Yeah. but moving to that connection, which is as a, a kid becomes an adult, goes off to college, becomes independent, the dynamic that you want to continue, and the only dynamic that's worth continuing is the connection dynamic, because the guidance dynamic, the parenting dynamic goes away and actually in many ways becomes a burden to them as they become adults, right? And I see a lot of relationships, a lot of parent and child relationships that as the child becomes an adult, doesn't matter how old they get, doesn't matter how much experience they get under their belts, it doesn't matter if they become parents or not, the dynamic remains a parent and a child. Yeah. You will always be my child, and I will always need to guide you, and I will always need to call you out. And that dynamic can be really detrimental to relationships. And I'm not saying that I engineered this or I read a book. I got lucky in a lot of ways by just, the first trip was circumstance. We needed to make a trip because uh, the way plans changed. Uh, And then we, because that one went so well, we decided to do another one. And those two trips in short succession, I think um, is the reason that we talk on the phone all the time now. In a way that we didn't, in a way Mm. that we didn't, in a way that we just, we didn't communicate with that frequency and that depth. And, and it's the actually timing, in, it's increased. The timing of it was so crucial. And the funny thing is, is I don't remember if it was this episode last year. No, it was when, it was when you did your episode about sending Lily off to college. And I was kind of reflecting as you were talking. And at the end of that episode, I remember saying something like, I really want to focus on making this year a year of connection with Locke because we had been at each other's throats. Like, he had a really difficult time with COVID and, and basically not going to school and Lockdown. not being able to see his friends. And that created a lot of tension between us that really ran a risk of just carrying this sort of butting heads thing off into the rest of our relationship. Really, even as you talk about your dad, it's like these little decisions. It's it, Sometimes it's these little decisions that can oh, yeah. change the trajectory of a relationship. It's It's kind of fascinating. So that's my number that's five, awesome, dude. Uh, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna refer to a lot of that with my number four, but I've got to say my number three first, which is um, Mythicon. And I wanted to be specific about this because um, 
Mythicon was 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 an amazing experience. Uh, so I'm pinpointing our main stage performance. Like, I've already said it, like the most fun we've ever had on stage. I just felt like it was a culmination of so many things that we had learned and just a relationship we have with the mythical beast and that it was just like, I mean, Good Mythical Evening is not on, not on my, not on my list. But like everything that we, we don't remember it. Everything we did brought us to a point where it's like we can. I don't know. There's just like there was a level of trust there that certainly Good Mythical Evening was instrumental in kind of building. Um, but everything was. So I just felt like it was, it was a great experience, and I, and I'll never forget it. Just how much fun that we had on stage. My dad was a part of it. Like I'll never forget the like the reaction that everybody had to Chase coming out. Like that particular moment for me was like really satisfying. You know, it's like it wasn't just about us riding in on a bike, but it was about this world that we had created that now these people were experiencing with us. It was just so much it was so much fun. And like the level of unhinged creativity that we put into it has given us even more confidence with how we are approaching 2023. And we got this twinkle in our eye, baby. And I think it's really about, it's those moments from this year. That that moment for me, for Mythicon, is something that like just really gets me excited about what can we do next? What can we create? Well, don't talk too much about that because I I've captured that as a as a point in a different way that okay. isn't related to Mythicon. But Mythicon is Th- my number that, one. Oh snap! Um, Mythicon. Oh, and I actually so when I obviously I agree with everything that you just said in terms of uh, I was done the the the, the stage show uh, being incredibly special and this incredible moment. Um, I think for me. <laughs> The I my performance with Jesse that first night. Well, is that if that's your number one, uh, save it. Is 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 save it for your number one. I feel like that's different. Well, but it was really Mythicon in total. But like, if I had to pick a point in which I was like, this moment is something I will absolutely never forget, and oh, don't, yeah. and, and don't know how I could ever engineer it again. It would be that moment. Well, let's come so, back. So to I'll it. come back to that. Come back to it. That's um, I, I think that's separate from. But I the main well stage, I might so. I mean. But number four in general was was you know releasing Human Overboard. Okay. Um, which again I've talked about it extensively. I'm not going to talk about it extensively here. Um, but this was just for all the reasons that I've covered a really significant moment for me, and I think that there's so many things about it and the way that things have been received and the stories that people have told and. Uh, that have been just very deeply enriching. Uh, I think that one element of it that stands out is being able to to you know record the song with Jesse and the Where We're Going song. She, you know, of course, she recorded a few of them with me, but that one in particular because it's about her. Recording it with her and then uh, being able to make that music video with her, which involved me having to go and find this footage from our relationship and mm. go into the archives of our honeymoon tapes. You know, we had like four hours of old VHSC or digital eight tapes from our honeymoon. About an hour and a half of that was me literally just filming like the stage show at the resort <laughs> we were at. I was such an idiot. Like anybody who does that, and I'm included in that, is an idiot. Like About if you 90 just, seconds of it was sex tape. If you just, if you go, like it's one thing to go to a concert and like Get footage of it so you can say I was there and post something on social media. It's another thing to like to say s- to I want to re-experience this entire. To think that you are making the concert film, that like you're making the concert film on your freaking phone or your little stupid ass camera. Yeah, you were a dumbass. That's a dumbass thing to do, and I've done it too many times. Okay, I, I just I'll just admit. But I, but especially you were young and in love, especially when you're at a not very nice all inclusive resort in Cancun, Mexico. <laughs> That the the only resort that you could afford at the time. Hey, you did you enjoyed it? I, let me just say the it's talent the talent pool 
of this particular resort when it's like there's people like these. I love how you're turning your these your, dudes one of your top there, moments of the year into sh on the, like these performers. These man. dudes up there like doing beat it. Like one of them's dressed like Michael Jackson. Oh wow! I, I'm yeah, you got to understand what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> it was so awful. Wow! And I filmed it. I have it. Anyway, going back Can and finding that? that footage and those photos. Um, was this like, man, this, because what the James and the Shame project and Human Overboard sort of represents is this sort of musical expression of the process of my deconstruction and thinking about this woman, my wife, Jessie, who's been there from the beginning and has gone through this on her own pace, at her own pace, um, and then looking back at our relationship in those early days when we were just like, man, look at those 20, look at that 23 year old and that 20 year old who got married, you know, uh, and, and, and got married for, you know, in, in a lot of ways because they wanted to have sex with each other <laughs> because that was the only way they could. Picked up on the first thing. Um, and to see how we've, she man, we, we got through. Girls. We, we got out of a particular world that I'm very happy that we got out of, and we are sort of traversing through a brave new world together in a way that, you know, I wouldn't trade for the world. That's so rad. But it's that, sweet. but so that, that, that moment with her is really the, the pinnacle of that for me, but in general, the whole uh, music thing has been deeply rewarding. My number four is, um, it's, I've said it's my scuba diving, there's like my scuba diving journey, but really that's, it's, it's really about my relationship with Lincoln this year, and it's so much of like what you described in terms of having a pivotal year and like these special moments with Locke, like, Deciding to get scuba certified, Lincoln saying he was totally on board and excited about that. So it became a thing that we were doing together leading up to going to Maui and like swimming through these like volcanic caves. And then, um, but the whole certification process, like having to take the class and having to take, you know, all of it. And um, it was, it was a, it was a huge project that had this big payoff. And then it has this long tail, I guess you would call it, of like adventures that we can have together. And it, it's, it's a special thing in a year that like, okay, now Lily's out of the house and me realizing that, you know, it's, okay, so the things that Lily and I could connect with, like the things that we'd watch on television, you know, the shows and the movies, like that was a big connection point for us. It was, mm -hmm. it was kind of like right there at the ready. And Lincoln, Lincoln's quiet. He like he plays into like the middle child trope a lot, and like he's such a peacemaker, and like he doesn't he doesn't seem to be needy, you know. So it's like me identifying that oh, I need, I've got to find my ways in. Um. And so scuba diving and that whole journey really became that for us. I'll also say. You're using your right arm, just so you know. It's out of the sling, it's making me nervous. It's like a snake approaching. You're Now you're beginning to gesture with it. It doesn't hurt. Okay. It's just. I'm not a doctor. Because I'm leaving it on the table, it's like there's no weight on it, I'm just gonna push. I'm, I can gesture with my hand. I need to gesture with my hand. Okay. And I also need to like air out my armpit. So that's why you took it out? Yeah. Okay. It's just a little swampy in there. Thank you, though. As long as I keep the right posture, and then I gesture like I this. I just want that thing to heal. Um, I need two arm to link. <laughs> me too, man. ASAP. Well, thank, thank you for looking out for me. I, I'm good. I think this is actually a, a good place to be. So um, the scuba diving journey was that, and also we started going to more concerts together. Like we went to the weekend, which you may have seen me on TikTok. <laughs> went to the Kendrick show. We went to uh, a Posty show, and he got to meet him backstage, and like, and got to meet Ski Mask, the Slump God. You got to wear that his medallion. Yeah, his. Um, so, you know, Lincoln and I do really connect over music, but like going to shows has taken that to a new level. So then he's bringing me shows like, hey, let's go to this. 
And then it's, sometimes it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to this with my friends. He's like, well, you know, if, if I can go to Lincoln, I'll buy your ticket. It's kind of like the deal. Pretty good. But deal. I'm like, I'm also like, now if you want to do some of this stuff without me there, or like if we, if you want to have, if you want to have a little bit of separation, I totally understand. So it's like I'm trying to be sensitive that, like, um, of course I totally blend in. Well, I mean, I th- you kind of do. <laughs> you seen the way you've been dressed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so the music thing is like a a big connection for us, and so we have a good time uh, going to those events together. So between that and the scuba diving, I'm kind of lumping that in together as like the year of of like finding those connection points that and the time there's time associated with it like so much happens within the context of just like protecting time to be together you know um it's not about just the, saying the right things having the right conversations you hmm. got to you got to you got to like set the set the table you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's which a, it, I definitely it's hear in your road trips. Those right? experiences, it's like with no low pressure. Yeah, where you can like exit dad mode and you can just like enjoy each other's company and have a common interest. So finding that um, has been a, this was a defining year for us for that. And you know, I was talking at the dinner table last night, and I was like, you know, we're putting this episode together, and I was really happy that Lincoln was like. Uh, our concert, you know, like that's what he said, you mm-hmm. know, he was, cause I was just kind of curious what what everybody would bring up. And the fact that that's what he said, even above this, this it's been more recent than scuba. We're not in scuba mode because it's it's cold. I think he would have said that a few months ago. So like, it's like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is registering with him mm. as well. So it feels good, man. My number three is um, the way I would describe it is us deciding to make decisions from the soul. Okay, okay, yes. And there's a lot There's a lot to say here, but I don't want to say a lot. <laughs> so I, I essentially we've hinted at this a number of times that in 2023, we are making some changes in terms of the way we think about the content that we make. Obviously, we're going to continue to make Good Mythical Morning. Mm-hmm. We're going to continue to make this podcast. Mm-hmm. He's going to continue to make his podcast. We're going to continue to be the, you know, founders and CEOs of Mythical Entertainment, which mm-hmm. takes a lot of time. Um, but what we have been doing over the past few years has been taking some of our most ambitious, creative ideas, and I would say our most concentrated creative energy, and focusing it into other projects that we try to get off the ground in a more traditional way, meaning a TV show, a film, putting together a pitch for a show. There's been scripts that have been written, there's been lots of worlds that have been built and developed, and these things take a lot of time, and there's things that we've been very passionate about. And there are still a few of those things that are at some point in a process that may eventually result in it being a reality. But there's a series of things that happened this year. Uh, Some things I'll keep vague, just because we need to, but um, there are some that we don't need to keep vague. You know, we our, our Food Network show didn't get picked up again, right? It, we, we did four episodes of it. Inside uh, Eats. It didn't, we didn't get any more of it. There's a number of reasons for that. Available all, all on things streaming. That are outside of our control. Maybe. Um, but honestly, you know, if I am honest about that project. Be honest. While it did, it was our thing in some ways because it was developed in the context of a network. It was like make the show that Food Network wants us to make and then try to make it as ret and linky as we possibly can or as mythical as we can. You know, the final product ends up being something that ostensibly can work on Food Network, which isn't necessarily something that we would have made from the get, right? It isn't necessarily a product that looks like it came from our soul is what I'm getting at. Um, a number of things that were at certain points in development, we were told no. Finally, no, we're no one's interested in this. No, we don't want to see this from you. No, we don't want you guys to make this thing. And then at the same time, we said no to something, an opportunity that we had, a big opportunity, an opportunity that could have 
significantly change things for us and our lives. Um, and we said no. And there's a lot of things that went into saying no. And I think that one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot this year, and especially lately, and a lot of the things I've been reading, and uh, you know, I just finished Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, which is a very short and compelling read. I recommend every, it's like four and a half hours if you wanna just listen to the audible. Oh, I have read it. Uh, yeah, and so, <sighs> And I'm, re and I'm starting on this new book where this guy's kind of talking about the concept of Dharma, which is kind of like your, you know, like your life's calling and purpose. And I, I realized that me and you have always had a really clear sense of who we are and what we are trying to do in the world. But many times in practice, we have executed things in a way that actually looked more like this is what people want from us rather than this is what we want to do, and this is what we want to make. And I don't wanna like overpromise and underdeliver. I'm not saying that we're about to like create our magnum opus or something like that, but there's been a significant shift in my mind to thinking about the way that we are uniquely ret and link and uniquely positioned to make things that only we can make, not in a qualitative, or, or, or not in a make something better than everybody, or, or see it in a competitive way, like we're on this competitive website and there's these new creators who are really popping off on the platform and we've gotta get in the mix and we've gotta do something new and we've gotta innovate, which is the way that I've thought in the past a lot of times. But as I've gotten older, it's less about that and it's recognizing the opportunity that we have, the fact that we have this incredible audience, this incredible support group, this incredible, in many ways, <clears throat> friend group that are the mythical beasts that have decided that, I'm kind of into the idea that these guys just try things with us and for us and recognizing that those are the people that I want to be making things for because those are the people that are so supportive of us digging deep and sort of coming from things coming from the soul, like ideas and creative ideas and a creative expression that comes from the soul that only that is a is a creative expression that only we can make. And I'm very excited about what that means for the future of the content that we're going to create. I love the fact that you decided to put this on the list. I you know um, I didn't put it on the list because. We're trying to figure out how we talk about the decisions that we've made. And I think you did a really good job. You know, for the things that we have said no to, and for like the big decision that we made, um, ever since then, I have had this growing sense of excitement. And um, you know what, just to, just to go back to the, the way that we used to talk, just this peace about it. You know, just feeling very much like, yes, we made the right choice. It wasn't, it wasn't an easy choice, but when it when it had to be made, it was obvious. And yeah, I'm sorry to be vague, but like, I think the reason why I'm glad you mentioned it, even though we're deciding to keep it vague, is because this was the year that we made that, which in some ways could be, you know, it is definitely one of the weightiest decisions we've ever made. Oh yeah. Ever. And um, yeah, and to to not have not to not look back, and and to feel like very confident that where I that I'm never going to look back on, on that decision feels really good, and because we have so much to look forward to that is everything that you said, that where we're true to ourselves and um, realizing the amazing opportunity we have, that, that, we're, that we are currently living our dream and that uh, that's, it's such a privilege. And again, it's that word opportunity. It's like you, you, you say you don't wanna overpromise and underdeliver. Well, yeah, because we don't, 
we don't have the specific plans. You know, we have we have lists and we have we're just starting this next phase of what we're going after. And it's not specific at this point. But it's uh it's the right trajectory and it's it's exciting. And I and you know, so sorry for being vague, but hopefully even with the vagarity of it, that it's not frustrating but exciting for you well, the thing listening we, to. The thing we cannot we, that we uh, cannot be vague about is we're going to be making internet videos. <laughs> like we're going to be making content right. that we put on YouTube. Right. And I as and opposed it, to spending all this time developing all these things that go into a boardroom somewhere. So that begins in 2023, but I'm it's important that it's on this list for us collectively because it's a it's a 2022 decision. I mean, it's a it's a it's in some ways it's it's a culmination of everything we've done, but definitely over the past two years, you know, and I, bringing and I, us to this and, point. And I also think it's funny. There's a lot of little things that uh, can, it, a lot of it is just being at this stage in our career and our lives and circumstances right. and that kind of thing. And you just start thinking like, what am I doing? Like, uh, but <laughs> just so you know, as this relates to Good Mythical Morning. You probably have already noticed this a little bit, like, but the way that we've been thinking about Good Mythical Morning more and more is how it, Good Mythical Morning is our playground. Good Mythical Morning is a framework in which we are just ourselves. We don't come up with, I mean, every once in a while we'll come up with an idea for an episode, but the vast majority of the things that we do on Good Mythical Morning are ideas that our team generates. It's a format. And orchestrates. And so, and then we more and more have seen ourselves as you know, this podcast is a place where we come and we talk about life for a long time. We're experiencing life together. We're having these conversations. We're processing things. That's what it's c- going to continue to be. If you want to be around for it, you're welcome for it. You know, we, we welcome you along for the ride. But it's not a gimmick. It's not like it's not a gimmick thing. It's just two guys who've known each other forever talking. That's that's what it is, right? And we don't want it to be something that it's not. Good Mythical Morning isn't this place for us to have this incredibly sophisticated creative expression. It's a place for us to be ourselves and bring joy and have an experience together to invite you into that experience. But the thing that we've been doing is this other huge piece of ourselves right. is this creative energy and passion, which ends up getting funneled into things. I mean, quite frankly, I think one of the reasons I ended up doing the James and the Shame thing is not just because of all the like, like spiritual processing and angst that was sort of building up and needed to come out some way. But the reason it came out in a creative way is that sometimes I feel like this t- tank of creative energy and it has to offload somehow. It's got to come out somewhere. It's got to pop. Somebody's got to open a valve. And this year the valve opened a little bit and out came this album. And, you know, and then when you think about these other projects that we've spent this time hours upon hours developing these worlds and, and these ideas, it was letting some of that creative steam off, but it was sending it into the ether to be forgotten. <laughs> and so I think it's like we're taking that creative tank and we are hooking it up to a hose that ends on YouTube, on a screen that you can see the final product. Um, and we don't exactly know what it looks like, but it's this sort of spiritual decision, soul decision, that feels that feels really exciting, and there are some ideas that we're excited about, but that's where the th- everything's being funneled. <clears throat> you know, this brings me to my number three. I think that, like, I think my number three to couch it in everything that we just said is like the the deeply personal and relational aspect between the two of us. You know, this podcast is a venue where we talk about our lives and like a nut like the arguably the deepest level of our friendship is on display. But there is a deeper level that is not on display and that I'm not going to talk about in this number. But I just want to I I wanted to memorialize the fact that there was some key conversations that you and I had this year mm-hmm. that everything that we just talked about in the previous point would not be possible without those conversations. That's true. 
and it was it was it was very formative it was very special and uh i just wanted to acknowledge that so that's you know to be, talk about being vague like i was going to put that i was going to put that on my list as well but, but i the, did, but, but i a, didn't know how to talk about it yeah and i didn't put the last one on our list so like you know that one two punch i'm glad i'm glad that we covered it because yeah there's a there's a part we have a relationship that's not for anybody else, you know. And I think that you mean our sexual relationship. <laughs> that's what that you. That's what. Oh. That's, that's kind of what you make it. You're making it sound like. In, uh, okay, no, not it's, it's not a sexual relationship. Don't give the Tumblr people anything they, uh, they don't already have. I mean, you can you, in, any way you want to try to interpret it. It's just like I'm not inviting you to do that. I just, I, that's kind of my point. Is well, that, I think the like, way that I would characterize it is that. Um, we have uh, our our friendship, which is the backbone of this whole thing. There are times when, um, in fact, I, I think I can I think I can say this because I think it speaks to it. Uh, one of the things we talked about is in the past. You know, I remember specifically there was a question that we would get asked uh, when we were on our. Um, Bleak Creek tour. I don't even know if it was part, it was a question, I don't, we ended up answering this question, maybe just because we get this question, what's the secret to a long, fruitful friendship? And the way that right. I would always answer this question was I would say that, think about um, like a marriage and then people have this baby that they're raising together and that baby, as long as that kid is at home, and there is, think about it like a, a, a career that you're building together is like a baby that never leaves home. And so as long as that kid is home, you're both committed to that. And, I, and, and you pointed out that that analogy, while made sense on one level, so if we've always got something that we're doing together, we got something that brings us together both circumstantially, like, well, we gotta show up at the same office every single day. Like, so there's no out of sight, out of mind with our friendship, which could happen with old friends. Right. But we're always gonna see each other. And so you don't get that. But then also there's like, hey, we gotta, we have to get through our differences in order to work together on a common goal. So having a common goal was the way that I would characterize, I, w I wouldn't say it was the secret, but it was the one that I would bring up. And you made up. You made the point that like, well, if you carry that analogy all the way through, well, the moment that the kid goes off to college, like if you've got a marriage that's just based on this common goal of raising a child and the kid goes off to college and you're empty nesters and then you look at each other and you're like, well, who the hell are we? What, what do we want to hang out? You made the point which I very much appreciated, which was, and not that our friendship didn't, not that we haven't had a friendship, but that by thinking about it in this way versus thinking about the fact that we have a friendship that we have to cultivate that isn't always cultivated by the entertainment properties that we make together, even a podcast like this that is intensely personal and authentic and does serve a great friendship sort of bonding role, we have to have a friendship that exists outside of the common goals. And I think this year was a point, and this is something that we've talked about and we've had difficult, very great conversations over the years, but I think that there was a pivotal moment this year where we had a more poignant, pointed conversation about it that I think was the most, uh, productive conversation that we've ever like we've ever had about that specific thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So there it is, uh, super pivotal. I mean, yeah, I've already I've already said my piece. So that's that's my number that's my number three. And now that I mean, it could be number one now that. And it probably should at least be number two now that I'm thinking I mean, about it. Listen, because I put like us hanging out with Post Malone. I knew you were going to put that super number high. Two. <laughs> I knew you because I mean, listen, when you were there, I knew you were having the time of your life. Um, and I, it was great. It's a top ten. I mean, it's definitely top ten. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm officially m switching those two. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm putting this one. It's tough at to, number it, two. It's tough to figure out the order. I'm putting my, this one at number two. My number two. Uh, Thank you for saying that. Which again is a I've done a full episode on it. Is dropping lock off at college. Um, the the specific moment I remember, which I don't know. I think I talked about this, but like we we smoked a cigar together while walking around uh, Miami. 
like well like a little park area and uh like had like a celebratory cigar, and this is not my idea. This is Locke's idea. He's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about just to say, so you know, this he, is a Locke idea. He wants to have a cigar with me every time he sees me. He's you know he's eighteen. I remember being this way. Um, and yeah, I, I think that this has been you know it's just for all the reasons that I talked about in the in the in the episode. This you know you got this kid, you got they've been a part of your family, a part of your household for eighteen years, and then. They're off, living their own life. Mm-hmm. And you're talking to them on the phone or on a regular basis. And you, I have seen him multiple times since then. Um, but that was a super substantial moment in my life and his life and our our family's life. So it's, it's gonna stand out forever. That moment when I wanted to have my moment with him and Jesse was like, right. <laughs> putting something in the trailer, giving us something that, to take to the trash. Don't bring that part up again. And we didn't have our moment. We all that yelled at her. That was your moment? Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget that. <laughs> I'll never forget that, Jesse. <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, so I'm I'm down to my number one, which um, I did talk about, so I don't, I don't have to like go through all of it again, but when mom's husband, Lewis, passed away mm-hmm. this year, uh, I w- spent that whole week uh, after his passing with my mom. And it was like, I did not anticipate how formative to our relationship that would be. It just seemed like the right thing to do. You know, I wanted to be there for her, but then the the quality of the time that we spent together, like, m- uh, you know, me just me and her every night, you know, basically having a sleepover at a point where she was she was going through such a tremendous loss. Um, our relationship it it just became like something that we will never forget. Like whenever we talk on the phone, even if it's just you know um, once or twice a month, like whenever it comes, like usually it'll still come up. You know, it's like it's something that we both hang on to. And um, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 I know she'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. It was extremely special. And um, again, I I don't take the credit for it. I think it was just you make a decision to 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 just be there. You know, there's like this time thing. You just kind of make yourself available, and then sometimes magical things can happen and that's that's what happened in my relationship with my mom hmm. and it's so you know when i put everything in perspective this year it's like it's the the moments that and i you know i hear this in 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 the things that you said too and i know you're not to your number 1 but like i'm just giving the summary i guess my summary is that like the moments are, that mean so much to us are so relational, you know? It's like, it just, all of a sudden you realize that you've opened up, it's like you're spelunking and you've opened up, you've come into a, you're in this little tight area and then poof, you're in this huge, beautiful cavern that you couldn't have anticipated was there. And being able, this year was, that. I mean, I had that experience in so in, in so many relationships with my dad, with my mom, with with my son, with my therapist, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, um, and it, you know, it's, it, you don't have to have it with everybody that I love very deeply, you know? It's like, maybe that's not, may, like, Chris and I had some amazing experiences this year, and like, like, we're, I'm, you know, we're ha- we have such a rewarding relationship. Like, I feel like, well, shouldn't there be something on my list there? It's like, actually, no, there doesn't have to be, you know? I'm hedging a little bit because I know that you and Jesse, <laughs> that your number one is Jesse, but like, I'll leave it at that. Well, no, actually, you know what? I've changed it. My number one is the week I spent with your mom after you left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh- oh, f*** you, man. Damn. Uh, <laughs> that was hilarious. Um. Oh, that's funny. No, my number one is is Mythicon in general, and then specifically uh, the James and the Shame performance, 
And then even within that is the moment that Jesse was with me on stage. And even with that, in that, the moment where she sang the Where she sang the, the high opera, notes the opera and Kill a Man and we had to stop because people wouldn't stop clapping. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, I think that this in, in many ways ties back into, I mean, first of all, it was like, I think one of the things that we're kind of discovering is that there are these, um, to continue to just use more analogies, because since we like to use those so much, it's just like, with each experience, you're like laying a brick. You're building something, right? What are you building, you know? Um, and sometimes you realize that, oh, I just finished the house. Like, I, this thing, I didn't even know what I was building and by hmm. investing hmm. in yeah, in something. It might be a skill, it might be a relationship, it might be an experience that you have. You're, you're building something and then it, it there's a result. And it's not always good. Sometimes you're building bad things. Sometimes you're investing in the wrong relationship, the wrong tendency, the wrong habit, and then you realize, what, then you gotta get in that house and live in it. And I think that, uh, not that we don't do that, but that these are our highlights for the most part, so we're right. talking about the good house that we've built. But to me, that moment kind of represents this, all these investments that I've had the privilege of making. Um, and I think it ties back into my number three, which is this, this, this decision to like do things from, more from the soul because that moment when I was performing, doing something that I really have no right to do. I mean, who has a right to do anything? But, you know. Especially you. You know, okay, Let's yeah. Let's just focus I, on you. I, I made some internet videos, and right now I get to make country songs, <laughs> make country music. Um, but the way that it was received, and the, th and the fact is, is that it could totally suck, and it would still be well-received, I mean, to a certain degree. Um, but there's this freedom, you know, and, and to see Jesse experience it, to have this, like, she was so nervous about getting up on stage, as we talked about. And then to see the reception and the warmth and the support that comes from the mythical beasts. To me, it was just this reminder that so often I get into a place where I think about how you do something in a way that makes it a success in the broadest way possible that you impress the most people. And what are the, you know, what are the factors by which you judge something being a success to the most people? Well, you, numbers. It's, we, we are, we're obsessed with numbers. How many followers do you have? How many views did that get? How much money did it make? And we've been pretty damn good at playing that game for a really long time, right? We know how to engineer things in such mm -hmm. a way so that they get numbers and it generates money. But one of the things that has come about is this freedom. Um, and I think that that moment of being up there, having written these songs and bringing Jessie and, ha and having her perform them with me and, and being so well received was this sort of giant um, check mark or endorsement on you're moving in the right direction when you think about doing things more from an authentic place of like who, you can, the only thing you can be is yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You can try to be what you think other people want you to be. And I've spent a lot of time doing that as a three, as an Enneagram three. Um, but to me, I think that, I don't know, there's just a series of events and that one encapsulates it the most of like the, the kind of the riskiest thing that I did this year was decide to do this music and to do it in the context of this family that has sort of gathered around our content and to see that, oh man, like, yeah, you can take a chance like that. If you go, if you, mo if you move into the heart, get out of the head a little bit and, and lean into it and create something from that place, what can happen? Um, and that's where I'm, all my excitement is in that right now. Not sp you know specifically my music. I mean, I'm still writing songs and I'll release more music, but like that's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about everything as it relates to us creating things and what we're gonna do next as it relates to me as an individual person and the way I show up in the world, the way that I show up in relationships. 
thinking about how does that come more from a, a soul place and a place of authenticity rather than just a I'm trying to fit somebody's expectations and trying to appear a certain way. Um, that's a good number one. That's my number one. Man, this has always been so rewarding. Uh, my rec is do the same. We, we always say this in these episodes, you know, it, it takes a little bit of work. Go through your go through your photos for, for this whole year. Jog your memory. Actually, make a list of, uh, of the things that were special to you. And then if you, you know, talking about it or writing down something beside each thing uh, is kind of a next level of reward that like I think we just experienced. So that's my recommendation for you to do the same thing. And if you want to share anything with us that can show up at the end of another episode, as always, you can respond by leaving us a voicemail. one 888 one Or use hashtag EarBiscuits, wherever hashtags are hashed. So have a good New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Mm -hmm. uh, because this is the last episode of 2022, but we will be back with another episode of Ear Biscuits on January 9th, 2023. Love ya. This is Tyler from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm talking to you from my car. I just wanted to let you guys know how much I appreciate you and listening to you guys for about 10 years now. I listen to Ear Biscuits almost every time I drive. Uh, Dad passed away in 2014, and a majority of what helped me was to you guys. Love you. Hey, what's up, Red and Link? It's your boy, Rick. I just finished my first day out alone on a job that I use a whole bunch of tools, whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff you got to know and do. And I, I didn't grow up learning all that stuff, man. I, let's say I was shaking in my boots all day, man. And actually, I wasn't because I just turned on some ear biscuits, had my had my little ear pod in, and. Man, I just listened to way you kept me calm all day, man. I, I appreciate it. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Hey, Rhett. Hey, Link. Love your guys' videos. This is so cool. I don't know what I'm going to be. Can you put this on the internet? I really I didn't know what I was going to say. I just called the number. I heard the episode. You should put this on the episode. Or not. You guys are the boss. Love you. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.